more people than I thought was going to be here. Good. Um, as Rob said, thank you, Rob, I am um, tasked specifically with supporting the armed forces community as part and parcel of the Department for Work and Pensions. Yes, I know. No, no groans? That's quite impressive, actually. We normally get quite a lot of groans when we say we're with the DWP. A uh, little bit about me. I have a, a TA background, an air cadet background. I spent uh, eight years here. You can tell I'm not local by the accent, I would imagine. Um, been a signaller, been a rifleman, um, showing my age as, a, as the uh, light infantry badge is there rather than the rifles badge. I did, uh, however, also spend nigh on 30 years as an air cadet officer as well. Part of that time I was on the small arms training team for Scotland and Northern Ireland, so I do miss playing with my uh, rifles occasionally. I've been a teacher, physics, computing and psychology. I'm not reading minds, don't worry. And I'm in my fourth year as a civil servant. So, yeah, a fairly varied career choices. When I came into the civil service, I started as a universal credit case manager. Case manager's job is to make sure you get paid what you're supposed to get paid when you're supposed to get paid. I then became a work coach and then did some team leader uh, deputising and stuff like that. Um, and I even did some job centre manager work before I started this job. So in four years, I've done quite a lot of different things as well. I must learn to say no, actually, but never mind. So I've been the AFC since February this, uh, this year. Um, I cover Dorset, Yeovil, because I'm closest, and the New Forest. So it's, qu it's quite a big patch. Um, maybe not as big as some others, but... And it, this underpins, of course, everything that we do. Specifically the bit for regular reserve, served in the past, should face no disadvantage. That is the underlying principle that we work on uh, as Armed Forces Champions. So, we are part of the Southwest team. There's nine of us in the team, of which there is three in Devon and Cornwall. I think that's right, boss, isn't it? Yeah. Um, two in even in Somerset and Gloucester, and four in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Why? Well, because if you look at this little table on the other side there, 10 out of the 20 highest levels of veterans live in the southwest. Of that, the top three or four are in the Wiltshire uh, and then the Hampshire area. So it's very much a case of they have the highest numbers of service personnel and retirees. So that's why you've got somebody in the north of Hampshire, somebody in the south. My boss is based in Exeter. So nationally that translates to 50 Armed Forces Champions in 11 teams. So there's not that many of us. So although we do an important job, we are kind of busy most of the time. So what is the role about? Armed Forces Champion was introduced in 21 as a direct result of uh, the department signing up to the uh, Armed Forces Covenant. And it was a recognition by the department as well that this was a vulnerable group that needed extra support. Okay. In the team, everybody has some relationship with the Armed Forces community, either as uh, a veteran, a uh, reservist, or as a family member of somebody that was serving. So we all have a, an understanding of what service life actually is. And our key role is to deliver excellent customer service and support to the Armed Forces community. That's the, the jargony bit that is in our job description. So who can get support from us? Veterans, fairly obviously. Service leavers, so when you come out of the service, uh, in that tra transition process, and then when you're actually out, we can provide support from the transition process through. We can also provide support to you guys that are in. Spouses, partners of ex-service personnel, 
non-dependent children and reservists. And it's worth bearing in mind that you don't need to be on benefits, you don't need to be on an armed forces pension to get our help. You just need to be part of that armed forces community. So you can walk into a job centre and ask for the armed forces champion. Admittedly, I'm probably not there, I'm probably in Limington or somewhere else, but you can ask for the, my support and I'll get back to you straight away. You don't have to be on universal credit or anything like that. So, the, real, the technical definition of what we do. We are your first point of contact. So whenever you are butt up to the system, we should be told that there um, is an armed forces community member in the system and we're first point of contact. Not just for yourselves, but also for your work coaches if you're in that position. Networking is probably the biggest part of our job. You know, there are 200 odd armed forces charities. I don't know them all. So networking between ourselves as a team within the job centres and within the uh, Covenant community is a really big part of what we, what we do. I was, for instance, meeting the Royal Navy, FPS family and personnel service chaps up at Yeovilton just yesterday. Recruitment, yes, we do actually support recruitment, whether that be regular reserve. At the moment, it's quite a small bit of what we do, but it's likely to increase. We upskill our job centre colleagues because they don't know about forces pension. They have absolutely no idea about how to do housing when it's forces housing. So we upskill them so that they know about the barriers that you may face coming out of the service into the civil world and also about any special adaptations that might be needed. When I say that, I'm talking about, you know, putting in a quiet room with your back uh, to a wall and all that sort of stuff for PTSD. Upskilling doesn't just be internal, it's external. We talk to the service charities. We, I'm going to the SAFA uh, work, Working Day, I think they call it, uh, in November to help upskill their side of things so they know some of the things that we do uh, and they don't trespass on that. Service personnel, service charities, we upskill everybody so that the idea is that if you get into a point where you need help coming out, you know what we can provide. Biggest part of our role is direct support with the hardest to help customers. Your complex needs with complex PTSD, uh, physical disabilities, all of that. A work coach in a job centre can't deal with that. They just don't have the resources or the time. So that's when we take you under our wing and we work with, uh, with, with you to get to the point whereby, ultimately, my job is to turn you into a tax recipient, into a taxpayer. So ultimately, the job is to try and get you into sustainable employment or whatever suitable. Okay, we're not going to force you to find work if you're not capable of work, but we'll, that's the sort of aim point we would like to get to. Okay, so that's the theory. What do we actually do? What we actually do is actually fairly similar, to be honest, but we do mostly complex cases. So, if you are further away from work ready because of illness, disability or addiction, that's something that we get involved with. And normally, we would talk about getting your GP to refer you to Op Restore. Homelessness is always a big issue. Um, risk of homeless, homelessness as well. Um, and for that, we've got Op Fortitude at the moment. Only downside of Op Fortitude is there's no housing in this part of the world. It's mostly based in the Midlands and up above. But we're working on that. Mental health issues, especially when it prevents engaging with the benefits process or has an impact on normal daily life. And for that, we've got op courage, which we often refer into for, for that kind of thing. 
And of course, signposting referring to third parties like the SAFA, like RBL, like uh, Defence Medical Welfare Service, all of that is stuff that we've got real relationships built up with all these organisations that we can then refer you on into those for their specialist support. Recruitment. At the moment, we're in the process of being told that the RAF is changing how it does its recruitment. Specifically, the plan is that they're going to shut all but 11 of the recruiting centres. And when it comes time to do the uh, aptitude testing, they're going to be directed into a job centre. And my understanding is it would be my job to sort of invigilate that process. So they're not Googling at the same time as they're doing the tests. However, that was supposed to have started last month, so who knows. Outreach, we go to all the various camps. Um, I spend quite a lot of time at Hamworthy uh, with the Royal Marines in Poole, um, starting to break into Blanford, hopefully starting to break into Bovington as well, so that we always have a presence, generally at least once a month, in the places where we perceive there is a, a need for you guys to know about what what we can offer. Veteran Sub in Weymouth, fantastic resource. I wish we had one in every part of the, the county, but we go there as well. Because it's still such a young role as far as the department's concerned, visibility is still something that we work on. There's still people in job centres in my district that don't know that Armed Forces Champion exist. I'm working on that but there are still quite a lot of people that don't know what we do internally and externally. So visibility is quite important to us as well. Kind of similar to the upskilling, uh, we provide quite a lot of support. I've done a number of three-way teams calls with customer work coach myself, and we provide the support that way. Or we can go in, we can case conference with other colleagues uh, and things like that to get the right help. Again, we advise job centres in anything that needs to be changed. For instance, somebody that's maybe a little anxious, probably getting them in at half past nine is not a great idea because they tend to be quite busy job centres at that time of day. But maybe when half the job centre staff are out for lunch, and it's quiet, would be a better time. Okay, so that's the kind of advice we would give to job centre staff. And the biggest one is we can meet our customers where they feel comfortable. If they want to meet at Tower Park Costa in Poole, which I've done a couple of times, because that's where they feel comfortable, I can do that. Just about nobody else in the department can do that has that level of flexibility to do what's right for the customers. So we also support work coaches with referrals to provision. There is, for instance, a new provision come out that veterans can actually leapfrog any waiting system and get straight into it, called Work and Health Programme Pioneers. So we assist with that process and actually identifying people who are right for it. Case conferencing with DEAs, disability employment advisors have the specialist knowledge about disability services in their particular job centre area. So we work really closely with them to make sure that where we can, if that's what's needed, we get the right support in that direction. Another fairly big part of the job is, is speaking to the job centre managers. Um, we've got to get them on board, otherwise they don't let us in. So we speak to them, we support their recruitment events, like job fairs, uh, open days, um, a thing called Pave the Way, which is for uh, disabilities, all that sort of stuff we support and can actually you know, go to and provide that dedicated armed forces community support if needed. And of course, 
on track. We can provide support by being here, by getting known. Um, it's not the world's most enlightening and shiny and colourful stand that we've got, but we're working on that as well. Um, I've also been to the, the British Forces Resettlement Service uh, job event in Tidworth as well. Um, so we get involved in all of these sort of things. What don't we do? We're civil servants, of course there's some things we don't do. Nobody say have a big long lunch. We can't go to your home. We can't do home visits. Okay. We don't have the right risk assessments to do that, but there is a dedicated visiting services team that can. The only downside of that is I actually need to tell them why they're going and make sure that everybody is safe, whether it be customers or the visiting team member. We can't do your PIP form for you if you need it. We can't do your DLA form for you, but we know people that can, and we can still provide some support. Okay, so I can't I can't write your answers in a PIP form in the way I would put it down, but I might be able to write the answers you give me, if that makes sense. Um, so we can provide support for that, but not direct support. We can't do it for you. <laughs> if you've got a complaint about the department, I can't leapfrog that process. And once it gets to the point of being tribunal, it will be hands off because it's now in the realms of legality, I'll have very little to do except maybe helping you collate evidence to take to a tribunal. But really, you know, the, the lawyers are involved now, nobody wants to touch it if they can avoid it. Because if you get it wrong, it's a, it's a biggie. And last but not least, as far as that's concerned, we will not overpromise. I will not tell you if you're, you know, if you're cashiered out tomorrow, I will not tell you, right, we'll get you a house. In this neck of the woods, not a hope. Just about anywhere else in the southwest, also not a hope. So I will not promise something that I can't do. Okay? So you can't come back to me in six months' time and say, you said this would happen and it hasn't. So we're very, very careful not to overpromise because we don't want to let you guys down, is what it comes down to. How do you get our help? Very easily. You can pop into a job centre, ask for an appointment with your armed forces uh, champion, and whoever it is that you speak to will send an email off to my boss, my boss will send the email to me, and I'll be in touch within a couple of days. Okay. There is a QR code, which hopefully we are in the process of spreading around everybody that we think might use it. And literally, you scan the QR code, and it will pop up straight open an email to uh, my boss. And you just say, I want help. This is where I live. You know, give us your address so we know who to send it to. And the next thing you know is, I will reply by email. OK? There's some info on gov.uk. It will not direct you to anybody in particular. It will tell you to phone the uh, job centre helpline. Give yourself a couple of hours with nothing else to do. Most of the service charities know us by now, so you can contact them. Even if you don't want their help, you can contact them and they'll pass it on to us. Likewise, your service welfare officers, for yourselves, your AWS guys, they know who we are. They can pass any issues on to us too. And last but not least, Veterans UK and the Office for Veterans Affairs. If they don't know me personally, they always certainly know somebody further up the chain that they can respond into and pass it down. Okay, So we're actually quite easy to get a hold of. That's it. That's all I've got to tell you. That's the rule. That's everything there is. But we're not quite finished yet. I wanted to take any suggestions for any other support you think that we might be able to provide. And of course, any questions. Just a wee word of warning, I'll not be able to answer any direct questions about your universal credit claim or your PIP or whatever. <laughs>